Hello everybody, this is Life Questions and I'm Bill Harris, your host. We want to thank you for your viewer questions that you sent us. We have turned them over to a local team of ministers to review and come up with insightful answers from the Bible. And so as we get started, I'd like to introduce you to those ministers. First up, we have Pastor LeBaron Cox of the Christian Cornerstone Ministries here in Lima, mm -hmm. followed by Pastor Scott Steed of the Christian Cross Church in Elida. And rounding off our panel for today is Pastor Rich Reiki of the Teens for Christ. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you with us today. Mm -hmm. And um, to glad that you could come and minister to our viewing audience here with, by answering their questions. Let me start off with one of those questions right away here. According to Barna, a study group, 52% of U.S. adults and teens have experienced religious doubt in the past few years. Even 50% of those who are Christian uh, or have Christian experience report, quote unquote, prolonged periods of doubt. Is doubt good for the faith? And adversely, what are the dangers of this statistic here that I just read? What, what do you think about this, gentlemen? Who wants to tackle that first? Well, um, I think in the last couple of years, uh, the country, our communities have gone through a great deal mm -hmm. with uh, uh, all that's been going on and, the, you know, the COVID virus and so forth. So we've been going through quite a bit of transitions. Mm -hmm. And I think transitions sometimes disrupt our our faith, our thinking, our communities. So, you know, it, it, it really is about your focus. Mm -hmm. You know, what you are focusing on. And I think what, what, what uh, the pandemic did was just break everyone's focus. You know, the transition mm -hmm. uh, sometimes distracts us. Yes. from our focus on God and the scriptures and our walk with Christ. So whatever you focus on is going to be what uh, you're dealing with. And sometimes, you know, our focus on God and the scriptures and our walk is, is distracted. Yeah. And so we do have to deal with doubt. And I think it's a part of the, the process, you know, because your, your faith is going to be tried. Right. Your Certainly faith is right. going to be tried by the fire. And if, uh, if your faith isn't tried, then it's not faith yet yeah. Yeah. until yeah. it is. Yeah. But I, I believe that uh, uh, we all go through these transitions mm -hmm. and ups and downs mm -hmm. in our walk with God in Christ. Amen. So. All right, thank you. I, yeah, I think welcome. when I dug into the research, because I wanted to figure out what it was, I pulled up the study from the link, and you can find that by simply searching doubt and faith on the barna.com website, but it's actually a positive trend. Mm. So people are more open to spiritual things. 74% <laughs> say that they want to grow spiritually. Mm. Right. And the same proportion, 77 percent say that they believe in a higher power and 44 percent say that they are more open to God now than before the pandemic. So it is exactly what my brother was saying is that people's world were shaken. We're not predominantly sure. talking about a Christian country. We're talking about people who now are having to question their belief system. And yes. that's a good thing yeah. because they start seeking for answers. Mm -hmm. And I believe if you're genuinely seeking for answers, you're going to you're going to find them in Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. God Amen. wants Amen. to reveal himself yes. if people yes. are genuinely seeking after him. So I, I kind of took that as actually a, a very good, positive thing. Amen. Well, to me, and I agree with you 100 percent, but James, the first chapter and the second verse says, my brother, Count it all joy when you fall into, into verse temptation, mm. knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Amen. But let Amen. patience have her perfect work, mm. that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Talking about maturity. Mm. Yeah. Because the Bible doesn't teach sinless perfection. 
because none of us are sinless. But talking about maturity and growing in your relationship and your knowledge of Jesus Christ, you're only going to grow in your relationship and knowledge of Jesus Christ when you go th I mean, in the tough times of life when you have nowhere else to turn but Him because mm -hmm. you're going to learn who He is and how great of a God He is. And I think, you know, the Bible says, if any, again, in verse 5, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that it give it to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Mm -hmm. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a, wa a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not him think that he shall receive anything from the Lord, for a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yeah. You know, and like you said, the, the uh, pandemic uh, was, was an attempt by Satan to distract God's people. You know, to try mm -hmm. to shut the voice of the church, mm -hmm. to try to shut churches down. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we have to have that faith that no matter what, God's going to see us through. Mm -hmm. There was a time where people didn't think life was ever going to go back to normal, you know, or, yes. or what was the sense of normalcy, mm -hmm. being together mm -hmm. again, you know. And, and God's seen us through that every step of the way. God see, will always see his people through, but we have to have that faith to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, will you say something? I wanted to touch on this research. Okay. You know, how much value should we put on research? This reach research statistic. You know, I, I don't know if, you know, because I wasn't asked what I thought. <laughs> were you asked what you no, thought? I wasn't you, were you asked? None of us are asked what we thought, well, typically but they, they come up a, with these statistics. Typically, they take us. They take a certain percentage of the general population <laughs> that's representative of the total population. Yeah, that's but how that. much how much how much value could we should we put yeah. in that? Well, you, I, know. you know, we'd have to find out who the head of that research company is and get him <laughs> on here to talk about that. Barn is one of the, the <laughs> best research companies out there, but it's the mm. same concept is you you certainly don't want it we don't put our value in statistics mm -hmm. we put our value in the lord and, and the i think that's that, what you're trying to yeah. say too yeah right. but yeah. but the other part of that that was interesting is if you dig a little bit deeper in the weeds they said 27 percent experience doubt because of their past experience with religious institutions or religious professionals yeah. meaning i i had an encounter with a pastor that mm -hmm. Hey, it was his bad day and I didn't know it, but man, that was how I viewed Christianity, yeah. right? Or, or I was hurt in the church or I heard about what's going on in my family's church and why would I ever want to be a part of that? Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes it's our Christian witness that actually spurs on doubts in people's mind because uh -huh. they're looking at us as the only uh, right. evidence of God, right? The only, I mean, they're mm -hmm. looking at us and they're saying, well, if that's what it means to be a Christian, Right. Why would I want to right. do that? Why would I want to be a part of that? So, I mean, I think it's a challenge for us, too, as mm -hmm. believers to be careful about our witness to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and along those lines, as, as a pastor, and, you know, I grew up when I was 14 working in the ministry, and I've, you know, gone through that and seen church splits and seen feelings get hurt and people walk, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One thing I tell my kids is you have to understand that this right here is not a religion. It's not. God didn't create religion, man did, and denominations, mm -hmm. and you know, because when you get to heaven, there's not a Baptist heaven, and there's not a Catholic, <laughs> you know, there's not a section of heaven for your church, you know, you know what I'm saying? Amen. We have to understand that it's a relationship with Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And as I keep telling my kids, Listen, no matter what anybody, he said, his, his word says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Mm -hmm. And that's what I tell my kids. It, you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're not going to get into heaven based off my relationship with Jesus. Okay. And you're going to have to have a relationship with, you're going to have to find the Lord for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to get hurt. There's going to be people that upset you. There's going to be people that, you know, hurt your feelings, but that's not him and that's not his fault, that's people. So you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ for yourself. And when you have that relationship with Christ, 
uh, all those other things. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right and all these things. All of those other things will just fade away into the background and will become less and less important when you have that personal relationship, that personal walk with Christ. Not based off a of church, not based off a of denomination, not based off of, uh, you know, any man or woman, but based off of your relationship with Christ. Mm. I think that's what's, what's, to me, in that spec, that's what's most but important you know, to my there, children. There are people that look, look for excuses. Oh, and the church is, is a hospital. It's a place for broken people, sick people, and we're all included yes. in, the, in the church. You know, folks, I, I think sometimes they look for excuses. Well, I, I had some church hurt, you know. But you know what? When they get hurt everywhere else, they, they keep going. They keep going back. But now when it comes to the church, I got church hurt, so I don't want to deal with the church no more. You got beat up at the bar, you go back to the bar. You know, they broke, they broke you up at the bar and they go right back to the bars, you know, and, and, and the clubs and so forth. But when it comes to the church, I got church hurt, and so I'm I'm, I'm 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 quitting God, uh, and I'm quitting the church, and and I'm throwing away my faith. And but you know what? It sometimes it's just excuses. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, let's go to another subject. Maybe we can uh, sure. get started on this, and we need sure. to take a, take a break in a few minutes. But um, this next question. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe the stories in the Bible are real, like the Red Sea parting and becoming dry ground. It takes a long time for wet sand to dry out. Some of this seems weird to me and even a bit questionable, but the plot is interesting. So after saying all that about the, what they don't believe, they, they do like the plot at least. But let, let's touch on this just for a moment, and we're going to pause, take a break, and come back, and we'll pick it up again. Um, who you want to go, go well, ahead, sure. Pastor? We can start in Please. Hebrews chapter eleven, right? What we call the faith chapter. Mm -hmm. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was made out of things that are visible that is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So I, the whole idea, faith, belief, trust, I mean, that's, it's all the same word in the Greek belief and, and faith. It's, it's the same word that pistos. The, the whole idea of I either accept it or I don't. And a little bit earlier in chapter 10, it defines faith a little bit, um, starting at verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, mm. with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to spur one another along to faith and good works, not neglecting to meet one another as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. So what I took out of that is faith is, is belief, it's belief in action, and it's belief in community, right? So if I'm trying to live my solo faith, I always say faith is an extremely uh, personal matter, mm -hmm. but it was never meant to be lived privately. Right. It's, kind right, of, it's, right. Kind of, it's, it's like our marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you, if you got married, you'd, I think your wife would want you to know that you, you tell other people that you were married. You yes. wouldn't keep it a secret. Right. right? Well, if I if I'm in a relationship with the Lord, it's deeply personal. Sure. But it's uh, but it was never meant to be private. It's meant to be announced and shared yeah. and, and, yeah. and lived out in the context of community with other believers. Nice. And so if you're not. If you have doubts, get around other people who are growing in their faith. Yeah. Right? You, yeah. Need to, you need to be in Christian community. You need to be in the church, a small group, a Bible study, something. And you need to start putting your faith in action mm -hmm. with, with, uh, with doing what God says here and see how when you engage with 
the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, you start to see fruit in your personal life. Amen. That's excellent. Well, you know, the Bible addressed this twice in Deuteronomy 8, 3 and Matthew 4, 4. It said that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Every word from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelations 22, 21 is the truth and it's infallible. You know what I mean? If the Bible says it happened, it happened. If the Bible says it's going to happen, you can take it to the bank, it's going to happen. <laughs> Just look around you. Just look around you, what's going on in the world today. It's setting up the end times. It's setting up the second yes, coming of yes. the Lord. It's going to take place whether people believe it or not. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You know, and uh, I, people ask me, I mean, you really believe that that stuff happened? Absolutely, I believe yeah. that it happened. Amen. I believe it happened just the way the Word says it happened. All right, let, let, let's pause for just a minute. I, I'd like to take a break. Um, and the uh, viewers would like for you to hang in there. We're going to come right back. I want you to pick up where you left off and you pick up where you left off and we'll go on from there. More good discussion coming up. Stay with us. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, thank you for staying with us. Now, Pastor, you wanted to pick up on this same point. Sure, that I, being I made. had a few thoughts on the, the fifth uh, question. You know, the Bible is, is a history book. It is. It is a history book, it's, it's got dates, it's got locations of things that actually happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we believe a lot of things we haven't seen. You know, yes. a lot of people, you know, they believe their uh, Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president and you know, George Washington and all of this other history. Mm -hmm. So what, why is it so difficult to believe the scripture? because it's a history book as well. Sure. And you know, the Red Sea, I mean, is it, is it that big of a deal for a God who did all of creation? I mean, this is a small miracle compared yeah. to creation. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at what a supernatural God can do, the Red Sea is a small, a small thing. It's a good point. It's an excellent Praise point. God. Yeah. Um, now, given the fact that some people like to look at, I, I guess, you know, some people look at science and I've, I've seen people try to use science against the Bible mm -hmm. and, against, and against Christianity mm -hmm. as well. But I, I, I like your point, the fact that he is a supernatural God. Absolutely. And unlike scientists say that it took many years to make this mm -hmm. planet. God spoke the world into existence. Yes, I mean, he did. Uh, because he's not limited to right. time and space like we are. He put those limitations here on us on earth, but he steps outside of all of that. He lives outside. He of lives, that. lives outside of Absolutely. all of that. That's so, why he said, "My way, my your ways are not my ways, and my ways exactly. and my ways are far above your ways." Mm -hmm. We can't comprehend right. God's ways because He doesn't operate in time. There He's outside go. of outside time. Of there time. You, go. you know, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day with mm -hmm. the Lord. Yeah. You know, that goes like to that question about uh, people saying that Jesus is coming and the, the end times are here and that, and uh, and it, they've been saying it for years, but. They have been saying it for years. And mm -hmm. if we die and you know the Lord doesn't come, they're still gonna be saying it. Yeah. Because eventually one day it is going to take yeah. place. Because not only is his word a history book, but it's also alive. Yes. You know what I mean? It is absolutely. a hit absolutely it's a history book. Yeah. It's the best history book to ever read. Mm -hmm. In written. Absolutely. But it's also alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, living, and it's taking living, place yeah. right in yes. front of our very mm -hmm. eyes. So uh the fact that Amen. they said they think it's an interesting plot, at least they're reading it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least they're reading it. One, wa yeah. one waters, or one plants, another waters, and God gives the increase. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At least they're reading it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. That, that is so true. That is so true. Well, then let's go to an, another question that we have here. I used to be really on fire for Jesus, is what this writer or this um, viewer writes. I felt such excitement in my spirit and read my Bible every day. I don't feel that anymore. I don't know how to get that excitement back. What do you say to this viewer? What do you say to this Christian person? They don't have the excitement that they used to have in the Lord. I believe that prayer is key. Prayer is key. And I believe that prayer works because God honors prayer. And when we trust him, when we trust him, uh, he can do whatever uh, is needful. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we uh, should bring all of our troubles to God, whatever they are. And he promised that he would never leave us or forsake us. And he gave us the, the confidence to believe that whatever we're going through, he is there for us to see us through. Mm -hmm. and, and with prayer, I believe that it, w it is the key to receiving what we need from God because he delights in showing us who he is. Mm -hmm. Praise I, God. I would ask the person, you know, what are your human relationships like? Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you think life is a perpetual honeymoon, you, you know, you obviously <laughs> haven't lived. And, and if you, or if you think it's a perpetual family vacation, something's right. seriously wrong, right? I mean, th there are, you cannot base your faith on how you feel. Absolutely. Faith is mm -hmm. not a feeling, right? right? Faith is a commitment, a belief. Mm -hmm. And I would say, why did you stop? Why did you stop reading? Why did mm -hmm. you stop growing? Nurture that relationship with God. If you, want, if you want a better marriage, start loving your wife more. Mm -hmm. Start spending more time with her. Date right. her, court her. Do the things that you used to do when mm -hmm. she caught your eye and you were interested in, in dating. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same with God. I mean, yeah. if you want a relationship with God, do the things that you, that you have control of to make sure you're setting up those appointments Amen. to meet with the Lord. Amen. First Thessalonians 5, 16, rejoice, ever, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, mm -hmm. prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from the appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray. Seek mm -hmm. God's face. Mm -hmm. Praise. What's the big, longest book in the Bible? The book of Psalms. It's all about praising. Yeah, you know, uh, in all things, give thanks. Not for all things, no. but in all things, yeah. give mm -hmm. thanks. When you don't feel like praising, praise, praise him. him anyhow. When you don't feel like praising, praise him anyhow. Mm -hmm. yes. Because that will bring that peace. That will bring that joy. Mm -hmm. That will bring, when you entertain the presence of the Lord, he said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. If you entertain his presence, he'll be there. He'll meet you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but the other side of this is it's, it's not a magic wand. No. Right. So, so I mean, we, we all know this, Absolutely. right? And I think it's helpful for the listeners to hear. There have been moments yeah, where, where it feels like it's dry, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're in the desert. It's dry ground. And, and, and we're, looking, we're looking for that mm -hmm. stream. We're looking for that oasis. And yeah. I would just say, you know, whoever you are, don't, don't give up. Right. Keep pressing in and pursuing mm -hmm. God, you know, just like you wouldn't give up on your marriage. You're not going to give up on your children. Don't give up on the Lord. Pursue him. And mm -hmm. you you he will honor that pursuit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. There's, there's a, a balance in, in, in between what you're saying, because on mm -hmm. the one hand, you're saying praising him and praying to him mm -hmm. really helps with uh, taking away that 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 feeling of isolation and the like. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, you're also saying you've got to press, you've got to press in because this is a pressing way. Yes, it is. And, and the more we go along in this world, the more we have to press because mm -hmm. the elevation of sin gets higher and higher in this society. Absolutely. And we have to contend with so much more mm -hmm. day after day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, there's a balance. They're on, 
It's two sides of the same coin mm -hmm. that you're talking about, isn't it? It, it really is. Two sides of the same coin. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, let's go on to another one here. Uh, we've only got about just a few minutes. Maybe we can tackle one question here. Men need to le lead more in their homes, church, and community. What can we do to encourage men to step up and lead? That's going to take more than the limited time we've got on this program, but let's make a stab at it. Maybe we can continue it over to the next program. What can we do with it? First of all, are we having a problem with men leading? Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, my short answer in the time is we have to get back, the church has to get back to discipleship. Mm -hmm. I mean, naming the problem and calling out the problem it, in the finger wagging is, is, is done. It hasn't accomplished anything. Writing more books and having people, what, what really is responsible is, you know, those of us who know the Lord, who are men, we need to be sitting down with other men and walking with them in their marriages, yeah, yeah. raising their children, yes, mentoring yes, them, yes. discipling them in, in small groups or one-on-one -on -one or whatever that looks like and calling up that next generation. Yes. Mm. You know, it, and, you know, God bless the women. I mean, statistically, women have kept the church going in America. Haven't they? And, and, but the problem is we're, as guys, we're just not stepping up and, it took me a long time in my pastoral journey to, to recognize the fact we have to specifically walk with men and disciple them, particularly in small groups, in community, where they feel comfortable sharing. They're not going to bear their soul in front of mixed company, right? They, they need safe place. They yeah, need to be able yeah. to ask That's the questions. Right. That's right. And, and for a long time, we have not raised them up and and, you know, the guys go off hunting and fishing on Sunday and the women drag the kids to church. And what's the example that's set? The guy says, well, when I get to be a man, I don't have to go to church anymore. Right. And so there, it's going to take a different. But you, but you know, we, we need to also give men the opportunity Amen. to lead. Give a, give a man an opportunity. Give him a chance. Appreciate him. You know, when you feel appreciated, you work different. <laughs> you, you do, you, you act different mm -hmm. when you're appreciated, when you're inspired, uh, when you're challenged. Isn't that what mentoring and uh, or discipleship can do for a man? Sure, it that? should. Yeah. Let's, it leave should. It, let's leave it there. We've only got, just, <laughs> we've got less than 30 seconds on this program. Listen, let's, let's just promise this to the viewer. Uh, we want you to tune in next week because this same fine panel is going to be on with us again. We want to pick up this again as our lead uh, bit of discussion next week on uh, men as the leaders in the church. Um, but for now, we have to leave you. So uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.